when people think about virtual reality, they're always thinking about pure, purely CG, you know, video games. And the idea of telling a story and, and trying to tell a strict narrative that's in 360 degrees was compelling. And being that I had come from theater, initially, years and years ago, I, I thought, what a, what a great opportunity to combine theater and cinema into this kind of weird amalgamation. The, the biggest challenge, of course, in directing in virtual reality and blocking any scene is that you, in, in essence, are seeing 360 degrees in, in full round. I really had no idea how we were going to do any of this. I didn't know, first of all, we didn't know if we could even cut. Everybody said, you can't cut, it has to be first person, you can't move the camera. And I'm like, well, how, how am I supposed to tell a story doing those things? But more importantly, it's how do you tell a narrative? You know, the, the contemporary thinking of maybe younger directors that are coming out of film school is, I'm going to cover everything in three cameras, and then I'll just assemble the, the film in post, and you know, I'll get a close-up, some wide, and a really cool tracking shot, and we'll cut in between, and we'll make the film in post. Well, in virtual reality, you cannot do that. You really have to understand how that camera, and how the actors, and how the scene is blocked out, and is going to tell a story. And you really have to see the film in your head before you shoot it. A director actually has to have what's called vision. What I found really exciting, and the actors found exciting, was while virtual reality is extraordinarily immersive, it's just as, if not more immersive for the actors. Because the actors now are standing on set, they look around, they don't see a crew, they don't see equipment, they're looking around and all they see is the environment they're in. A, a new band called Galvanized Soul, a great young band, they wanted to do a music video that sort of not only covered um, the theme of who they are and what they're doing in terms of just trying to break out and show sort of a, a newer branding, um, but they also are sort of lighthearted and they're, they're, they're tongue-in-cheek and they're a little self-deprecating. So for that I wrote up this concept of doing more of a tongue-in-cheek approach to a music video, which is sort of older school like you know Van Halen or the Foo Fighters or Beastie Boys. So we went in that direction, which was great for VR because we could go from scene to scene to scene. We were breaking all the rules that people told us uh, we couldn't do with VR, which is uh, quick cuts in music video. We are telling a story, we're moving the camera, we get close to action. You know, it introduces a lot of technical challenges, but we want to solve those because we feel that uh, that then leads to more compelling content in the future. In working with um, the Foundry, we had talked to the Foundry and said this is some of the things we're doing, and, and well, we were kind of thinking about VR, this is really great, and Jeff gave a laundry list of these would be great tools to have. A few months later, we start getting these great tools initially developed that are, for lack of a better term, sort of saved us on the music video, because even though the work Jeff was doing was great, the tools made it so much easier. It is amazing, because I had this whole projection, reprojection workflow that I was very proud of. <laughs> and they had one node that replaced that entire process. So it processed significantly faster. Things that were taking forever to render, rendered near instantaneously. Um, and it's just easier to work with. When you have a moving camera shot, shot in 360, stereoscopic, you have all the challenges of each of those things uh, compiled on top of each other. Resolving the cameras together is, is uh, much more challenging and stereoscopic. For any work you do on one eye, it has to translate beautifully to the other eye. When you're repairing the stitching between cameras, uh, you might it might look good in one eye and terrible in the other, and suddenly the person's like completely distorted in your stereoscopic view, as well as the normal issues of uh, your shelving stereoscopic depth on top of uh, stitching depth. And then once you're moving the camera, you're introducing uh, depth changes over time and stitching changes over time, and it becomes like this compounding mess that you have to deal with. Outside of doing it with Nuke and the VR tools, uh, it would be such an immense challenge that I think uh, it would be nearly impossible. Where is VR going to be in two years? That's a good question. I think it boils down to just the content. The thing that I have, ne I never lose faith in, is that somebody will come up with terrific technology. Let me, let me tell you, watching a, a, a 20-something person watching Lawrence of Arabia on an iPhone is criminal and ridiculous, but people don't have the time to go to the movies. But what VR does in that aspect is you can take something on your phone and put sort of like a 3D, 360 degree, almost IMAX screen on your head anywhere you are. That's the leap, in my opinion, that's the big leap. It's, the, is it, it's not just about an experience, but it's about bringing an experience that people no longer can do or have the time to do.